Hello and welcome to the broadcast by Serbian Language Podcast. Today we're going to talk about the ups and downs when learning the Serbian language. Let's go. Hello there and welcome to Serbian Language Podcast, to the broadcast. Uh, my name's Cam. Glad to see you guys here and thanks so much for joining. And today we're going to talk about the ups and downs when learning the Serbian language. Yes, there are some ups and downs when you're learning Serbian, but just hang in there. Do not get discouraged. Hopefully these tips and these pointers are going to help you navigate through those tough times that we're all going to have on our language learning journey. So let's just get right into some tips and tricks and things you can consider as you're navigating through the ups and the downs of learning Serbian. One point I want to make right away. Your psychology will dictate your results. Success starts in the mind. And I've said this before, and I can't say it enough times. Whatever you tell yourself is what's going to become true. Your language learning journey is going to mirror your psychology. So you have to have the right psychology going in. And that's one of the most important points that I can make. A lot of people think if I put all the work in and I do all the things necessary, it's just going to arrive. And the answer is no, because the journey needs to be not only beneficial and purposeful and useful, but also really enjoyable and helping you develop a better psychology about the entire process in order for that process to work best for you. So that's the most important thing to remember that your psychology will dictate your results. This brings me to another important point. Be very careful with your self-talk. If you're negative in the kind of conversations that you're having with yourself, that is going to derail your progress and is going to make any downward spirals that you're having continue going downward. So do not be negative with yourself. Be very positive with yourself and watch what you say to yourself. A lot of times we say things that give us a way out of the areas we need to improve in and this applies to our psychology as well. An example of that would be don't say I don't have time to learn Serbian. It's what most people will say and I will tell you right now. You have time. Don't tell yourself that. Tell yourself this. I'm not making time to learn Serbian. That's more true than the other statement is. So just bear in mind that the kind of self-talk that you're having is going to dictate your journey and progress you can experience when learning Serbian. Number three, you can't manage time but you can manage activities. A lot of times people have this upward spiral, which is great because they're making time to learn Serbian. And so they're experiencing progress. Again, this is the key to learning. What people want more than anything when it comes to getting motivation is they want to see progress. That's going to come if you're putting the time in. If you're going through a bit of a downward spiral, it's likely you're not putting enough time into it. So make sure you're managing your activities. Okay, Activity management is where it's at. You can't manage time. The clock's gonna keep ticking whether you want it to or not. It will, I guarantee you. The key is, are you doing what you need to do when the clock's ticking? So make sure you're managing your activities. That's gonna help you take a downward spiral into an upward spiral and just keep that in mind. You will have moments of doubt. It is inevitable. A time's gonna come when you're like, I don't know if this goal is achievable or not. I'm not experiencing progress. I don't see myself advancing in the language. Maybe this just isn't for me. Wrong. You will have moments of doubt, but you're going to have to, again, confidently navigate through those moments. Everybody's going to have days when they're performing better than others. That's just a part of the actual language learning journey process. So when those moments of doubt come in, be sure you're having the right conversations with yourself and you're defeating them through action. If you just sit and go, Serbian's so hard, I'm not flowing yet. I've been studying for six months and nothing's taking place. You're already psyching yourself out. And the best thing about our minds is they make whatever we feed into them become true. So if you tell yourself that, you're going to find a way to make that narrative true. Find a way to make the positive narrative true. So just don't get discouraged, okay? The doubt, really, use it as a way to fuel a very positive thing, which is the fact that because you're doubtful, it's actually an indicator that you care about your goal. So then reverse it. You're having doubt. Well, that's because I care about my goal. So what can I do to build upon that care? Well, I can take action and start studying more. That's the way that you can kind of turn the table around and get back on an upward trajectory and not live and, and wallow in misery of the difficulty that you might associate with the journey. Because again, it's not hard. It's not hard. It just means that learning is required. So defeat that doubt with action that's oriented towards your goals. I like to always tell people, you've done harder things than learn a language. You have done harder things uh, than learn Serbian. Remember the very first time you tried to learn how to ride a bike? Remember that? It wasn't so easy. 
You had the training wheels on, they came off, you took a couple of falls, but you kept going. Remember your first relationship, the first time you learned how to drive a car? Like, maybe some of you have children. You've done harder things. The first job application you submitted, you got the job, you showed up, you kept the job. You've done harder things than this. I'm telling you, you have. This is just something that requires continual effort, and you're not going to get the kind of instant gratification that some activities are going to give you. So just take comfort in the fact, and I use this expression all the time, take comfort in the fact that it is a process that is going to require you fully applying yourself for a continued period of time. It's going to make you a better person. I'll talk about that in a future broadcast. But just kind of keep that in your mind as you're thinking about the ups and downs of language learning. Some things to keep in mind as you're studying Serbian. Some days you're going to speak better than others. And I can give you a personal example. There was one day I just had it. I was talking in Serbian. I was like, man, I'm the man at this language. I was really just killing it. And the next day I had a language class and I was talking. I couldn't get two words. I couldn't get two words right. Couldn't do it. Couldn't speak Serbian to save my life. And I sat down and I was like, what gives? What's the issue here? How did this happen? And I thought about it for a long time. And you know what I realized? Who knows what the answer to that is? And it doesn't matter. Just like sometimes in sports, there's sports players, they have a great game. The next game, it's not so hot, right? They're coming down one game, they're scoring three pointers, they're coming down making soccer goals. The next game, they can't score a penalty kick to save their life. These things just happen. There's ebbs, there's flows, there's these positives, there's these things that aren't quite as positive. The good news is, collaboratively, collectively, they're all positive because they, they really help to comprise the fullness of the journey. So don't get stuck on those days you're not having success. Take comfort in the fact that, again, there are times when you're going to have successes and you have to find ways to expound upon those. So learn how to unpack your successes when you're having a great day, when you're retaining words, when you're able to understand certain expressions and sentence constructions via the Serbian Language Podcast website. Uh, use those opportunities to say, what was it about today that helped me you know, have such a successful learning? because perhaps there's something that you're doing in the morning or the middle of the afternoon that's helping to um, help you arrive at a great day of learning. Maybe you had a breakfast. Maybe you had a great conversation with your significant other. Maybe you read a little bit of Serbian or listened to a lesson video in advance of going deeper into your studies. Perhaps there's certain things that you can do to prevent in advance uh, some of the difficulties associated that you might see during your Serbian language learning journey. So just unpack the successes that you're having and stay encouraged knowing those can always be duplicated. If you did it once, you can do it again. Another big point, you have to learn how to respond to what happens to you. Don't react. Again, language learning is going to be up and down sometimes, and that's fine. That's just a part of the process. When it's going great, that's great, respond to it. When it's not going so hot, relax, respond to it. What do I mean by the word respond? Well, when you respond to something, you are utilizing your emotional intelligence. It means that you're suspending the moment, you're taking logical thought and you're infusing it into the moment, and from there, you're responding in a logical way. That is how you utilize emotional intelligence. That's being responsive. Now, when you react to something, you're just going straight to the knee-jerk reaction, straight to the emotion. You're not igniting that emotional intelligence that you have inside of you that you're going to need throughout this language learning journey. This is what I mean when I say learning a language makes you a better person. It's going to force you to utilize all of those emotional intelligence qualities that you have to navigate towards your goal. And there are really five components to emotional intelligence. I won't go too deep into them, but I will name them because they might be helpful for you to think about. Uh, the first is self-awareness. The second is self-regulation. How do you regulate your emotions? The third is empathy and compassion, and that applies to yourself as well. The fourth is motivation, which comes from progress. The fifth is social skills, and those are the five components. So just remember that when you're trying to ignite and infuse and excite your emotional intelligence, you're drawing from those five components and make sure that you're using them. Don't give up. Stay nice and relaxed because you can do this. You should have seen my face the very first day that I began learning Serbian and I found out about the declension system. I was like, is this for real? What does that even really mean? <laughs> I couldn't comprehend it. I was blown away. Some time later, I look back and I can see where I was back then and I'm going, man, it wasn't as bad 
as I thought it was. Furthermore, I didn't have to make it as complicated as I made it, but my psychology at that time wasn't as well equipped as it is now, so I made the mistake that many of you are making by thinking, oh man, it's just so hard and this is incredibly difficult. There's seven different cases that every noun and adjective and pronoun and number need to navigate through, and it's different depending upon uh, singular, feminine, or neuter. If you talk like that, Again, you're psyching yourself out of the game. Get yourself in the game. Learning is required. That's all there is to it. And I'm going to keep saying it because you need to keep hearing it because that's the best advice I can give you on how to navigate through those ups and downs as you're acquiring your language skills. Stay positive. Stay encouraged. I'm proud of you. You should be proud of yourself. The fact that you have an interest in learning Serbian speaks to the depth of your character. If you enjoyed this particular broadcast, this particular episode, please give us a big thumbs up, like, subscribe, and let us know what you think in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching, and we're going to see you in future broadcasts, and I can't wait to see you there. Goodbye.